Hey everyone, so it looks like I'm gonna be needing my old Ford here pretty soon. But before I start putting this to work, there's a couple of things I have to take care of, and also a few modifications that I wanna do. So first off, and most importantly, this thing desperately needs some servicing and oil change, because I know that has not been done in a really long time. They did write a date on the filter in here, and it looks like the last time the engine oil was changed was in April of 2018. But we're now at the end of 2023, so that is definitely due for a change again. And furthermore, I'm pretty sure that when they did that, they only changed the engine oil and that filter. I don't think they touched anything else. And the reason I think that is because of the fuel filters over here. You can see how faded they are. <laughs> These things have been on here for a really long time. They are definitely older than five years. So I'm thinking if they did not change those that are relatively easy to get to, I really don't have any reason to think that they would have done any of the other stuff that is even harder to get to. So I want to give this thing a full service, changing all of the oil and replacing all of the filters. And I want to go in and also lubricate or grease up all of these hundreds of joints and pins that are on this thing. Because I'm sure no one's done that in a really long time either. Another thing I want to do is to make a new exhaust for this. Not only does this look terrible, it's just a car muffler that is sort of shoved onto it. But it's also full of holes all up along the pipe. And we are coming into the winter, also known as rain season, and with all these holes, it's just gonna be letting a lot of rainwater right into the manifold, right into the engine. I really don't want that. So I wanna build something that looks a little more nice and also has a rain cap on it. I would also like to do something about that front windshield, but to be completely honest, it's just not a priority right now, so that's just gonna have to wait. What I do want is to do something about my lighting on this. I only have this one working headlight up here in the front and one tail light in the back and my indicator lights, but that's all I have. I don't have any of my spotlights working. And this time of year, it just gets really dark really quickly. So I would really like to get some functional work lights on this thing. I also have some plans for this uh, front attachment up here, and also there's some steering issues to sort out and a bunch of other little things all around. But let's just take it one thing at a time and I'll probably end up splitting this into several videos. So let's just go ahead and start by giving this a full service. So, unfortunately, I am going to have to be working out here in the cold because, well, not only is the Unimog still taking up space in there, but also this just simply won't fit inside, especially when I have the front loader up like that. And I do want to have it up there because that just gives me a lot more room to work down here on the engine. But that also means that the very first thing I have to do is to secure this somehow, because you really don't want to work underneath something like this without having it supported in some way. All it takes is for some of the hydraulics down here to fail, and this whole thing is just going to come crashing down. It's not that I think they will fail, like the hoses on here are practically new, but it's just nice to be on the safe side. Now I have seen pictures of a tool that was originally made for these, which is basically a big clamp that you put around these cylinders so they just physically cannot come down. Now of course I don't have that, they are probably long gone if ever there were any around here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make my own. I do have some of this uh, nice thick angled steel lying around. 
I think this will do just fine. So I'm gonna go and cut these into length and I'll weld some taps on them so I can clamp them around those cylinders. So of course it started raining in the meantime. It's almost like the weather just knows when I'm gonna be working outside. Anyway, so the idea is that now I should be able to just clamp these around here. I admit this is not the most convenient design, but it was pretty quick. Besides, this is not something that I'm going to be taking on and off several times a day, so that's all right. Okay, so I got one on there and I kind of want to test it with just that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the arm on it. I'm not going to do it with the engine running because I don't want to be pressing down on it. I just want to drop it. <laughs> nice. So now I know that just one will hold it just fine. So if I go ahead and put two on here, that's also going to make me feel good about the whole thing. All right, so now I'm feeling pretty good about this because now this whole arm just physically cannot come down. Like unless something wild happens, like the whole cylinder breaks off in both sides at the same time. But you know, if something like that happens, I'm just gonna accept my fate. But look at how much more room we got in here now. This is really nice. Now it's not that this couldn't be done without doing that, of course it could, but this just gives so much more room and makes it a lot easier. So finally, we can get to doing some oil changes and uh, let's just start with this engine. It's not terribly easy to get a wrench on there. Ah, there we go. So I'm a little curious to what comes out here because I've heard from someone who's done a lot of work on these that the common issue with this engine is internal water leak. So I'm hoping I don't get a ton of water coming out here first. Nope, that is pure oil. Awesome. Honestly, this stuff is pretty thin. This was supposed to be a 15W40 oil, so it's, I would have liked to see it a little bit thicker than this. The engine is not warm. It has been a while since it was running. But uh, other than that, this is actually not looking bad. Let's just get this off while we have that tray under there. Came off pretty nicely. I was expecting much worse. Changed oil plus filter on the 12th of April, 2018. So uh, yeah, it's been a while. All right, so as for the oil, the engine is using a 15W40 and I went with a mineral oil because that's just typically what these older engines like. And as for everything else, it's gonna be using this stuff. It is a universal tractor hydraulic gear oil 
And really the most important part here is that it has to meet the specifications of M2C-134D. And as for the brand, or rather the quality of the oil, it, it works with oil as it does with pretty much everything else that you get what you pay for. So that's why I went ahead and got the absolute cheapest stuff that I could find. <laughs> Reason for that is this old machine, it really has a retirement job now. It's only going to be working a few hours out of the year. It's never really going to be under stress. So it just wouldn't make sense to spend a whole lot of money putting a lot of quality oil into a machine like this. All of this stuff is going to get old before it ever wears out or before the machine wears out for that matter. And the same goes with the filters. I didn't pick any specific brand. I just found the numbers of all the filters I needed and I just went with the cheapest option. So all of this stuff is still going to be plenty good for this old machine. Besides, whatever is in there now, it has been in there for 5 to 10 years, so it, it's an improvement no matter what. So the oil filter I got is from Stock Automotive. We do have a parts number on it here, so if you need to, you can use that to cross-reference and find a filter that will work for you. I'm just going to go ahead and show you that on all the filters I'm going to be using. Let's just go ahead and get this cleaned up a little. It's actually nice to see that this is back from when they took their time and coated the engines on the inside. A little bit of oil on the O-ring. Gonna need these slippery gloves off for this. Also just going to leave the date on here, it's always nice for the next guy. This has definitely seen better days. Let's get a nice fresh copper one on here and put that back in. And click, nice. Oh wow! This stuff is really thin. Look at that. It's almost like water. Kind of looks like a 5W30 or something. Even considering that oil usually gets a little bit thicker as it gets really old. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this didn't have the right stuff in there. This is way too runny. Right, let's go ahead and get some fresh stuff in here. Oh, it's one of those. So I'm not entirely sure how much goes into this, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in here at a time and uh, we'll just check the dipstick once in a while. Okay, so now I'm just a little bit over the full mark and that's alright, it's going to suck a little bit up into that filter, so that's perfect. So the magic number is right around six and a half liters. That seems to be all good, but it is getting really dark and really cold and really wet out here. So uh, yeah, let's just do one of these. The next day, well, it's still cold and wet, but we got a bit more light. So a couple of things left to do on the engine. We have to replace the fuel filters over on the other side. And the last thing is the air filter. Actually, let's just go ahead and do this right away because this should be fairly straightforward. I'm just now realizing I might not be able to take this out because this cylinder is right here. So maybe this is one of those things I have to do when the front loader is down. I don't think that's supposed to come off. Okay. Ah, no problem. <laughs> that's just full of soot. <laughs> you can really tell that 
this exhaust was leaking probably before they put this on, or actually might be while this was on. And I'm pretty sure this seal was supposed to be attached to it like that, yeah. So I'm guessing this fell off at some point and it's just been able to suck all of that exhaust air right into the air filter. <laughs> Oh, right. I keep forgetting. This thing is American. <laughs> and we have another date on this. February of 2013. That's probably when this thing had its last full service. So that's just over 10 years ago. <laughs> and for the air filters, I got for the inner one, it's a Donaldson, and you have the part number right here. And for the big outer filter, I got this UFI with the part number right here. Inner filter, that looks very much like the one that was in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and write the date on both of them. And we have the big one. Yeah, that rubber seal, that is supposed to be attached to the filter. So that's probably why the old one was so full of soot. It was just disintegrating and it lost that seal. Huh, <laughs> this doesn't fit. It can't fit over the thread in here. That hole needs to be just like a millimeter bigger. Huh. And everything else about the filter is correct. It's the same diameter and the same length and all that stuff. For some reason this hole is just a little bit too small. <laughs> Fixed. So yeah. There's some downsides to just getting the cheap filters. <laughs> I also like what they did here. Instead of having this little handle on it, they just welded a washer onto the side of it. <laughs> and just like that, it's a perfect fit. And let's just put a date on this as well. Right, so final thing I want to do for the engine here is to give it some new fuel filters because these also look really old. But there is no feed pump on this. It's just gravity fed as the tank is sitting much higher than everything else. But I'm pretty sure that also means that if I just take these filters off, it's probably just gonna keep dumping diesel out of there. It does have a little valve down here underneath the tank. See if the camera will pick it up. There we go, right in there. And I'm pretty sure that is for shutting off the flow of diesel, but it's in a really weird place. It's completely enclosed under there. I am not sure I can get my hand in there to turn that, but let's just give it a try. There's definitely not room for my glove in here. Uh, well, I can touch it. Oh, it actually turns. Maybe this will work. This is not the best place to put this valve. They could have just put it right up here. <laughs> Come on. All right, I think I got it. All right, let's try and get these off. Pretty sure it's just sandwiched in with this one bolt. Oh man, these are nasty. Look at all this snot on top of that. It's all rust and mud and dirt. <laughs> these were definitely due for a replacement. Hopefully we're not gonna see that much dirt in this second filter. Oh, well it's pretty much just as bad. 
Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That is terrible. That is just all rusty mud on the inside of these. I'm actually kind of impressed it was able to let anything through these at all. Be sure to clean these up a bit. So as for the fuel filters, I did not just get the absolute cheapest stuff because this is the more delicate part of the system. So I got these Hengst filters and you got the part number right there. And I believe that these come with all of the O-rings and stuff. Nice. There's a very small difference in these O-rings. One is a little bit bigger than the other and we want the little one to go in here. And we have the big one out here. Let's see if this can just hold itself up in there. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And the tiny O-ring just goes onto the bolt that holds it all in place. And everything is exactly the same for the other filter. Okay. Let's just go ahead and put a date on here as well. All right, so now I'm hoping that I can just open that valve on the tank and then open this bleed screw up here and hopefully these will just fill themselves. And once I get something coming out here, just gonna close this back up and it should be bled for air. Okay, so that should be open. Let's see what happens. I did hear some air coming out there. What happened? We were just bubbling. I mean, it's right there. <laughs> okay. Well, there probably has to be some in the tank for this to work. Of course, now the front loader is kind of in the way <laughs> being up here. But I suppose that is my own fault. I could have just filled this up beforehand. All right, let's just try this again. Oh, there it is, right away. <laughs> cool. So I guess I was just running dry. <laughs> All right, so with those filters taken care of, I just want to fire this back up and make sure it's still able to start and we got all the air out of that. And just make sure that everything is still running fine. Because if that's the case, that means we are completely done with that engine for now. So I can also take the pressure off those clamps and get those off so we can lower that bucket back down. So that is pretty much it for the engine. Well, actually there is one more thing I should probably just say. There is the power steering that has its own little separate closed system, but I already have that full of fresh oil. And reason for that is because a short while ago I ran out of power steering fluid. And what happens on these when you run out of power steering fluid is you can't steer at all because it is completely fluid driven. So that's exactly what happened. I couldn't steer and figured it was out of oil. 
So I went in and got that filled back up and bled it for air. There's not a whole lot in there because it only has what is inside this, which is actually a filter housing. There is a filter in there, but it's also the oil reservoir for the power steering. So I got this filled back up and I got my steering back and I'm not exactly sure where it all goes because I haven't really lost any fluid since. But because I know it's all fresh fluid, I don't really want to drain it back out. At least not until I find out where it's running off to. It may just be that it's very slowly seeping out of the cylinders down here and just so happened to run out now that I got it because I couldn't find any major leaks. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do anything to that, at least not until I get to looking into that a little bit further. So instead, let's go ahead and focus on the rear part of this because we have two more separate oil systems here. There's a lot of oil systems in this machine. We have one up here that is for the torque converter and the gearbox, and we have one back here that is for the rear axle and differential and the brakes. This has so-called wet brakes, which means that the brakes are submerged in oil inside that rear axle, which is a pretty common thing for tractors. But uh, let's start with this uh, gear section because we also have a filter on that. So down here, this is the back side of the battery box, and right up here we have the filter. I'm pretty sure this is for the gear part of the machine, or it's probably for the converter part actually, because that's really what cares about clean oil. And up here we have the drain plug for the gear oil, and also further back on that square plate, that's where we have the drain plug for the rear axle, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's start with the gear oil up here. Just gonna start by seeing if I can get this filter off. It's not a whole lot of room to work with. Oh, that actually came loose. <laughs> cool. It just looks really old. I didn't have high hopes for this. Should have had some of my rubber gloves on for this, but I'm just not really bothered to get back up. Sheesh, now I sound old. This has definitely been on there for a good long time as well. It's actually started to rust up here and the paint is flaking off everywhere. I actually struggled to find the right filter because I couldn't read the number on it anymore. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I have heard again from someone who's worked a lot on these machines that if they have issues being able to drive forward and backwards, like they're not really getting power through the converter, it may very well be that it's just this filter that's clogged up. So if you have a machine with uh, those kinds of issues, it may be worth to just change the oil and give it a new filter before you dig deeper into that. Let's just see if we can get this drained out as well. Looks like it's just a half inch drive that's gonna fit into that. Yeah, it sort of fits. Oh, even this came loose. This is almost too easy. I don't even know if it's all gonna fit in this bucket. I sure hope so. And for the gear converter filter, I got this Wix with the product number right there. But you should check the filter on your machine because from my understanding, there are several different types of filters depending on the exact machine. By the way, that goes for all the filters I show in this video. It started raining again, so now I kind of want to be down here. And yeah, I did lube up the seal on this as well. So while we are down here, let's just go ahead and get the oil out of this rear axle. Now there are no filters or anything back here, so it's just gonna be a simple oil change. We're just gonna get the old stuff out and fill some fresh stuff back in. Yeah, I should probably have emptied out my bucket in between because <laughs> I'm cutting it a little bit close here. <laughs> so to fill it back up, I believe we have to come through these two little uh, covers in the floor of the cap here. This one for the gearbox and that one for the rear axle. And this is gonna snap. <laughs> yeah. Let 
Oh, this one turns at least. Yeah, there's a plug down in there. Although it's almost right underneath those pedals, so it might be a little bit tricky to pour anything in there. This cover already has one bolt missing. And there's the other cover with a cable right across it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I was just checking to see if this was the right size of a socket, and uh, I could just take this off with my hands. I didn't even need the wrenches. <laughs> So this was not on there very well. And there's actually a dipstick on it, that's pretty cool. I was wondering how I would know when this is full, but uh, yeah, I guess that's not gonna be a problem. I'm not gonna be able to pour with this big jug in here, so I think I'm gonna have to pour it into some smaller ones first. And from here into that. Well, this is gonna take a while if I can only do it two liters at a time. <laughs> Go ahead and check it again. And we are just under the full mark at 12 liters. That really wasn't very tight either. So I think the reason they're not very tight is because they are just metal on metal up here. Usually on a plug like this, you would have some kind of sealing ring, like a copper washer or some kind of rubber seal or something, but there's nothing on these. And I'm not really sure that there ever was. All right, well, that took a while doing that little by little. I ended up putting 27 liters of oil into that rear axle. So this is turning into a fairly expensive oil change. Anyway, what I want to do now is to fire this back up and just make sure that it's still able to drive, that the converter and the brakes and all that stuff still works the way it's supposed to. And also to get that fresh oil pumped around in there so we can go in and check the levels again and see if we gotta add a little bit more. nicely so I'm just gonna go ahead and check my levels in here again because I assume it's gonna have pumped some of it into that new filter down there and let's see yeah there is nothing on the stick now so we're gonna need a little bit more in there I'm just gonna start by pouring another two liter in here And that put us right above the full mark, so that's good enough for me. Cool. So I was going to put uh, some kind of sealing washer on here, like a copper washer or something, because it just seems a little unusual that they don't have anything. But I actually don't think they're supposed to, because they also function as the vents. There is a little hole drilled into this, so I don't really want to be blocking that off. So uh, it's just going to go back in the way that it was. And nope, it's just barely touching the stick, so we're gonna need a little more in there as well. Let's see. And yeah, that is right at the full mark. Cool. All right, so we ended up doing, let's see, 14 liters in the gearbox and 33 liters in this rear axle. I'm never going to financially recover from this. Alright, so that is our rear axle and transmission and all that stuff completely done and ready. So that just leaves us with one final oil system and filter on this machine, and that is the hydraulics for the attachments, so for the front and rear bucket. And they have a filter right in this console here on the side of the machine. And I'm not going to be doing a whole lot to drain out the oil of that system 
firstly because most of the oil is going to be inside the cylinders all around so it's a really big job to get it out of there you have to go and loosen up pipes and hoses to get it out and it's just not really worth it because when i bought the machine the guy i bought it from let me know that he had just blown out a hose on this thing so that is why that one is new and of course with it being down here and you are up above it you don't really notice so quite a lot of oil was pumped out of that but then he had the hose replaced and of course filled the system back up with the oil so it should be mostly fresh oil that is in this anyway so i'm only going to be draining out whatever comes out when i take this apart so it does look like it has a drain plug out here at the end but it also looks like it's been years since that was out so let's just see if it'll even move Nope, I'm just rounding that off. Doesn't matter, I'll just take the whole filter housing out. It's gonna drain out anyway. Oh, that's, that's not nice. Someone's already rounded that off pretty good and then proceeded to beat it up. Well, that one wasn't even tight. Given the state of that one, that makes me wonder if that's because there's no thread left in the other one in here. Well, no. The thread seems to be just fine. Guess they just forgot to tighten that one. But how are we going to get onto this? Well, might just work. Yeah, nice. Was able to hammer on a smaller size socket. Yeah, so uh, as suspected, given that recent hose failure, the oil in here looks pretty much new, so there's no reason to drain this whole thing. And there's our filter. Well, despite the new oil, it definitely needs a new filter. There's all kind of good stuff on that. So for the hydraulics, I got this man filter with the product number right here. Now, unfortunately, this did not come with any O-rings, so uh, I'm just gonna have to reuse the one that is on the housing and hope for the best. Well, honestly, the O-ring on here really doesn't look bad, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Pop. It is really cold out here now. My fingers are freezing. Now we just have to do something about this mangled bolt here. Look at that. Now, of course, this is an imperial bolt and I don't really keep any of that around. So I think I'm gonna have to make one. I don't even know what this is. Half inch? Well, not quite. Let's see. Seven, so seven sixteens. I barely even know how to measure this. Yeah, seven sixteens. Okay. All right, so now I'm thinking if I had to make something like this, I would make it from a 12 millimeter bolt because that's just the size over. But that would give me a much bigger bolt head and I'm pretty sure there's not going to be room for that on that filter housing. Well, there might be room for the bolt head, but there won't be room to get that big 19 mil socket on there. So actually I'm thinking I'll just grind the head of this back down into a nice shape. It's going to be one or two sizes smaller, but honestly I can live with that. It's not like this is something you're going to have to take on and off every other day. So uh, I'm just going to try that. Ha <laughs> ha. 
All right. So now it's just a 15 millimeter head on a 716 bolt. <laughs> that makes sense. And while I got this bolt sorted out, it got really dark again out here. <laughs> My window for filming outside this time of year is just super short. Ta-da! Problem solved. That'll work just fine. All right, it's the next day. Now we got a bit of snow as well. I'm just getting all of the weather in this one project. Also, that makes it day three of doing an oil change. <laughs> no wonder it takes a long time for me to get videos out. Anyway, we got that filter replaced, so now we're just gonna go ahead and top this off with oil again. Well, I'm not gonna top it off because I still have some of the cylinders on this a little bit extended, so some of the oil is out in the system. If you wanted to get that to top level, you should really get all of the cylinders as retracted as they will go. That will put the maximum level of oil in that reservoir, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put back in roughly what I got out here. So that's just a couple of liters. And that should be right under this cover. Well, that didn't unscrew as easily as I thought it would. Might just be freezing up though. <laughs> well, that was supposed to be a hinge. <laughs> All right, so now I'm between the add and full mark. That should be plenty good. As I said, I still have some oil out in the system, so if I retract everything, that level is gonna rise a little bit more, so that should be fine. All right, so that's really all of the oil systems and filters taken care of. Now, there's a few more things that I want to do before we call this good, and one is the coolant. I actually have no idea what is in this machine. It could just be water for all I know. I don't think it is. It would probably already be dead if that was the case but I really don't know what is in this machine. So it would be really nice to get some fresh stuff in there just so I know that it can survive the winter without cracking somewhere. And also because, as I mentioned earlier on, one of the known issues of these engines is that they form uh, little rust cavitations inside the uh, waterways in there, and eventually they leak through the block and into the oil. So it would just be nice to get some fresh antifreeze in there. That would also help protect from that internal rust. Ugh, that is looking pretty nasty on the inside. Yeah, we're definitely draining that. But I don't really see any easy way to do it, so I suspect I'm gonna have to get one of these hoses off in here. So I'm just gonna raise this uh, front loader up again, because that's just gonna give me more room. And it will also allow me to check that this is sealed up nicely and we don't have a leak here. <laughs> So I've had it running up to temperature for a while. I did put a little bit of uh, additive in here to try and loosen up some of all that brown slimy stuff that seemed to be in the radiator. But I did see this once I got that front lift out of the way. There's actually a little drain valve in the bottom of the radiator there. So if we can get all of the mud out through that, I might not even have to take the hoses off. Although I can't exactly see where it's going to drain off to. Oh wow, that's tight. Might just drain right onto the top of that front axle down there. Ooh, yeah, that's some brown slimy stuff coming out of that. That's some pretty dark brown stuff. 
It has cleared up a little bit. It's not as bad as the stuff that initially came out, so that might just have been the mud that was at the bottom of the radiator. But it's still not looking really good. And because I had that additive in there, I'm just gonna run some clean water through it just to flush it out a few times. So I've been flushing it through with clean water for a while and now we have, well, almost clear water coming out of there. Still a little bit brown, but it's good enough for me. We did get a lot of dirt out of that system. That is just pure mud down there. Let's just go and get this filled back up again. All right, well, that's pretty much full to the brim. But I'm pretty sure it's just the radiator, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up again and get it circulated through the engine and warm it up till the uh, thermostat opens up, just to make sure we get all the air out of it. And I can go in and top it off and uh, we should be all good. Okie dokie, so now I got my radiator filled back up and that really means that now all of the fluids are more or less taken care of. So that really just leaves me with one thing left to do, at least this time around, and that is to go in and find the grease fittings on all of these moving joints. And there is a lot of them because there is at least one in every single joint and some of them even have two, like the one up here, you have one in through the pin itself and then you have another one in the eye of the cylinder here. And also some of them are broken, seem like this one back here, there's supposed to be a little ball in the center of that and that's gone, so that one won't seal up again. So I'm gonna need to replace a few of them and also some of them are completely covered in dirt. Right here's a good example. This one's just somewhere in there. So I'm gonna have to clean that out as well. So uh, that's probably also gonna take a little while to get through all of those. This is also a pretty good sign that none of this was greased recently. I do keep a bunch of these in stock. I even have them in imperial sizes. I hope they don't all take that much grease. I don't know if it's just me, but there's something oddly satisfying about filling these joints that hadn't seen any kind of grease for ages. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna film all of these because there's just way too many. That could be an entire video on its own. And of course, it's not just on the front and rear buckets. They're down here on the axles and the steering and all this stuff as well. Yeah, but uh, the one over here, I don't think we can save that with uh, just some grease. <laughs> that's gonna need a little bit more. But uh, that's gonna be a project for another day. Alrighty, so I think that was all of them, or at least all the ones that I could find. Now, of course, there are some of the pins in this thing, and there's that uh, bearing over there on that uh, swivel in the front that's completely missing. And some of the pins are completely worn out and I'm not trying to save it by just putting a little bit of grease in there. I know that's not really going to do anything. It's going to need proper repair at some point. But I know that I'm not going to get around to doing that anytime soon because it's just really not important. I'm not going to be doing that much digging. Well, I might fix that bearing up there, but other than that, I'm not going to be doing these uh, implements anytime soon because it's a really big time consuming heavy job. and. Again, it's just not that important. So at least by keeping a little bit of grease in everything, I can hopefully keep it from not getting a whole lot worse really quickly.
Well, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said this felt a whole lot better now because honestly it felt just fine before. <laughs> but it was really nice to get all this stuff taken care of and serviced. Now I feel a little bit better about using this once in a while. And I will just say that uh, apart from those fuel filters that were pretty dirty and that oil in there that seemed way too thin for what is supposed to be in this, especially the engine oil, other than that, it actually didn't look all that bad. So it seems this is a pretty healthy machine internally. And I should probably just say for those wondering, the reason I park it with the rear arm down is because it does lose a little bit of pressure over time, so it will eventually drop down on its own. So I may as well sit it down in a place where I want it. And also it just takes some load off that rear axle that it doesn't have to hold all that weight up there all the time. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you found this somewhat interesting. Of course, there's going to be more projects on this in the future. But uh, for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.